Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. An injunction has been filed by PSS against the Sinemai government. Also tonight, IPI states what austerity measures they have taken. And community members speak out on a ban that will protect the environment here in the Sinemai. In sports, endurance sports season is fast approaching. Time to step it up. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects. And I don't have to get out on the car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag. Like before, it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes, and I have to hang up and then call her back. And now I don't have to do that. You know what's a good thing too is that when you come over to visit, I could give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour. So that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Hoffa Day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Thursday, February 27th, 2020. After five hours of deliberation, it has been voted upon for the public school system to file an injunction against the Sinemai government. KSPN's Sally Limas has the details. Chairwoman Ada, I would like to make a motion to direct the Commissioner of Education to work with our legal counsel to immediately file an injunction against the general fund and the legislature um, at duality because I feel that the legislature has some culpability in this as well um, because it should have recalled the budget, it should have reappropriated the funds so that it was properly done across the board. So that is my motion, Madam Chair. Motion. With three members of the Board of Education voting yes, the public school system will file a lawsuit, forcing the government to implement the Sinemai Supreme Court's ruling on the certified question. It's the governor's uh, position to fight for the cuts or the legislature, but it's the legislature's duty to also find revenue to help us. I want to throw this burden back to these people back there and figure this out, yeah. what, what they're going to do. Andrew Orsini, who was one of those who voted yes, states that the financial situation PSS currently faces is unmanageable. If we cannot operate this institution, then we got to shut it down. Philip Mendiola Long, who was an appointee to the board, states that though this is a tough decision to make, it is his responsibility to serve those he represents on the board. Our two members who are dissenting have valid points. We need to understand that when PSS does this, it is going to cripple the general fund. 
uh, people will lose their jobs. Um, and that's not something that I can take lightly. But then I need to remember which family I'm representing at this point. And who needs me the most at this point. In a separate interview with Lieutenant Governor Arna Palacios, he expresses that the board does have the right to make decisions that affects the educational system. But it is unfortunate that despite all discussions, they went ahead and pushed for the injunction. It's unfortunate that, that the board had to, to force this issue. But, you know, um, what do they want us to do? Uh, give him 25% of what? We'll give him 25%. 25% of what is actually being collected. That's, that's the bottom line. Palasha states our economy primarily depends on the tourism industry, but due to unanticipated global issues, the CNMI is currently hurting. And when you have airlines shut down from one of our major markets and a continuing shutdown, of the, the, the other um, primary market, which is the Korean market, uh, you, can, you can project out, you can project out 300 million, but whether that projection is gonna come to reality is a totally different story. Palasha says the administration will continue to reach out to the board in hopes that they will haul off the decision until they've discussed every other option. If somewhere down the road, uh, that decision is made that forces the executive grants to, to cover over funds. They, those are going to be on the table. We might have to shut down offices, um, displace people. And the unfortunate part is even though those displaced people cannot be migrated into the private sector because the private sector is also cutting back 30 to 40%. This is not about just government uh, challenges. This is a, a, a whole economy. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Sally Lemis. The coronavirus is spreading around the world. And while it is not in the CNMI, the effects are with the economy and tourism. The CNMI government is taking drastic measures by implementing austerity measures, but they are not the only ones. At today's Commonwealth Casino Commission meeting, the Human Resources Department for Imperial Pacific International stated they have already implemented their austerity measures. And it's actually in effect already as of February 10th for our non-exempt employees. Would you say so non-exempt? Which employees are you talking about? Um, Is that not the casino employees? Rank and file employees, everyone under the manager level uh, who don't meet um, the exempt um, uh, definition pursuant to the Fair Labor Standards Act. Meaning across the board, employees that are below management level are getting the pay cut, making a reduction to 24 hours per pay period until further notice. A labor summary was given on the total number of workers for IPI, stating 15 for management staff, 368 H-2B workers, and 112 local manpower, totaling to 480 workers, but are expecting over 662 H-2B workers to arrive in March. What you heard this morning is a report from the construction site uh, that they, they're currently uh, awaiting over 600 uh, H-2B workers to, uh, to come in uh, as part of the H-2B. Uh, to assist them in making sure that they complete the project as uh, expected based on the license agreement. Phase two of the construction on the Imperial Pacific Resort is expected to be completed by this summer. The word phase two is also being used at IPR, meaning that the next phase is now the hotel tower. Right now they, they have finished the, the, uh, the so-called uh, villas, that's the VIP, they're now concentrating on the, the main hotel itself. So they're shifting to that. Um, uh, it is ongoing though, so even though from the outside you see that the facade is coming up a little bit slow, there is a lot of activities going on on the inside part, so the construction never really stopped. But Eric Poon, Vice President of Construction, states meeting that deadline will not be possible without a thousand workers, which they have needed since last year. 
How many workers do you need? Actually, a thousand or two thousand? Over the over thousands. Yeah, over, thousand? over thousand. Right now, definitely, it's not enough. You know, to uh, as of today, uh, definitely, we, we we cannot you know meet the deadline. The additional H two B workers arriving next month will help in the construction phase. But one question raised by CCC Executive Director Edward Delion Guerrero is if the travel ban due to the coronavirus is still an issue at that point. Do they have a plan? Anticipated the arrival in March 2020. March? Uh, okay. uh, to your knowledge, uh, uh, would, do you think that the coronavirus may impact some of these folks? Because even if you're from Taiwan or Thailand, if you and your passport gone to China, right. you will not be allowed to enter. Right. At so this at know? this moment, I haven't uh, heard anything regarding you know the virus um, impact, um, you know, getting people over here. But definitely, uh, what we know that uh, there's several, um, well, a couple airlines already they reduced um, their uh, flight to Saipan. So, but again, I am not sure um, it's going to impact. So, uh, so I, I don't have an answer for you. Right now. USCIS has approved 1,030 H-2B visa applications for IPI for fiscal year 2020-2021. Delion Guerrero says the casino does remain open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and that an exception has been made to allow employees and gamblers to wear a face mask while in the casino, taking one more step to stop the spread of any sickness. Government agencies, local businesses, and members of the general public spoke on important concerns they have on the styrofoam ban and the plastic bag ban. Two bills that may make some huge environmental changes have received some support, but are also encouraged not to rush into it. The Department of Public Works, who would be one of the enforcers of the bills, are concerned with public awareness. Uh, DPW uh, supports the intent of uh, uh, Senate Bill 21 but also notes that there are, that there, there are issues um, you know, in regards to, to plastic. And what we would like to, to see in, in the deal is, is maybe a, a language that will provide for, for a mandatory segregation process. Uh, as you know that, that you know, people, when they, when they throw their municipal waste, uh, you know, they, they come to our facility, they pay for a tipping fee. But unfortunately, when it comes to segregation of recyclable product, that's where we have a problem. Comments from the Chamber of Commerce focus on incentive mechanisms. There have been some concerns from businesses for sanitation purposes, such as the butchers, um, for some of the different types of styrofoam. What the Chamber is suggesting is instead of banning all, banning all styrofoam, instead of find a way to incentivize businesses and wholesalers to import biodegradable products, one of the ways that they were suggesting is to just not charge an excise tax whenever those come into port. And if there were a way to work with customs in order to show that products are biodegradable, then they would not have to pay an excise tax on them. And some businesses are requesting for more time on this bill. I think the community is ready to see this, to, be, to move into this direction. However, um, we need more time to try to use up what we have, find better uh, uh, containers that actually will hold up to, uh, you know, the you know the parties that we have, the food that is served with guests and so, and so forth. These are the things that we're concerned over. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Sally Lemis. In Washington, D.C., the House of Representatives passed the permanent status for long-term workers and investors. According to Congressman Gregorio Kalili Sablon, H.R. 560 provides the same permanent status that President Trump previously approved for parolees, but only in the Marianas. This allows for two additional groups to be covered. Investors, who had been lawfully admitted to the Marianas under local law before federal immigration was extended here, and long-term workers, which was defined in the U.S. Workforce Act to provide certainty to their employers. Coming up, we head to district court to check out day one of the high school mock trial. Stay tuned.
Mom, are you sure? What about the shutter? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light a cold candle. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Watch the Visitor's Channel online, on time, anytime, at SaipanTV.com. Where to go, what to see, what to do, restaurants, spas, activities, and culture, it's all in one place, in high definition, on your mobile device. SaipanTV.com. Check it out. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. It is day one of the 2020 High School Mock Trial Competition. The mock trial is a two-day event held at the district court with CNMI judges presiding over the rounds where students from six high schools are competing for the opportunity to represent the CNMI at the National High School Mock Trial Competition held in Evansville, Indiana in May. There are three essential aspects uh, for the mock trial competition. Number one, it hones students' public speaking abilities. Number two, it engages their critical thinking skills. They have to understand the rules of evidence, have to be able to respond on their feet to objections. And the third important thing, it really teaches them what it means to collaborate and to do teamwork. The competition wraps up tomorrow with a championship round at the district court. On Guam, the island is expecting a decrease in flights from Korea due to the coronavirus, KUAM reports. Here's your Guam news update. Public Health announced that the CDC will remanufacture corona test kits after issues surfaced about their effectiveness and reliability. There's no specific time frame when we'll receive a new kit, while the airport's also waiting on a thermal scanner to help detect infections of arriving passengers. The airport met with airlines about the recent spike in cases in South Korea. As a result of that meeting, uh, we did find out that one of the uh, Korean airlines uh, has uh, made the decision to uh, suspend uh, travel from the area in Korea that seems to be the hotbed right now. Uh, they made that decision on their own to not take passengers from there. There being the country's fourth largest city, Daegu. It's not a perfect setup uh, because there's nothing to stop a person from uh, traveling from that area and uh, catching a train or another flight up to another airport in uh, Incheon and be able to uh, fly into Guam. Ada says while the airlines do screen passengers before boarding, it's primarily just to check if they've been to China in the past 14 days. The U.S. government has not banned inbound travel from South Korea. We don't have the authority to uh, just unilaterally decide uh, that we will not be accepting flights that originate at certain points other than uh, from China. I think we're doing uh, as, as best as we can to screen them. And what's important is that when persons of interest have been identified on the flight is that we um, get all the information we need as to where they will be staying at and um, the Department of Public Health uh, is supposed to be making periodic checks on these uh, passengers. And ultimately, Ada says, it will be up to the individual. There's only so much the government can do. I think we too have the responsibility to take measures to, to uh, protect ourselves. Wash your hands, uh, you know, when you, and basically public health says wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Over 100 flights have been canceled up from 57 a few days ago. Addis says the airport will be tightening its belt due to loss in revenue. The Korean Airlines office advised that their flight attendant had been reportedly infected and does not fly the Guam route. Check us out at KUAM.com. Stay tuned after the show tonight for our segment of Vintage News. This one comes from April 6th, 1993. The governor and Washington rep deliver their State of the Commonwealth addresses, urging lawmakers to pay attention to federal concerns. And businesses are fighting for the right to salvage treasure ships that are south of the NMI. Also, we take a look at the latest trends in the car industry and computer world for that time frame. Coming up at the KSPN2 Sports Report, remember the Sablon termites? We do. Next.
You deserve more. I know it's been hard. Come on, let's go for a ride. Hi, welcome to Dal Rancho. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this feels like home. Dial Rancho Home. Making lives better since 1987. Do you have a team or company? Bring them to the Adventure Specialist, Saipan's homegrown Marianas Trekking. Our guided adventures will challenge and excite you, and our award-winning photographers will capture it in a unique and unforgettable way. Check out our off-roading, go-karting, mountain biking, hiking, and snorkeling. And we have top-notch rental gear, too. So bring your team, bring your family, or bring your best friend. Marianas Trekking inside the Mariana Resort. Grow your business with the Channel 2 News. Our professional staff are here to help you market your product, brand, service, or business in the most effective way possible. Be it state-of-the-art video services, graphics, or animation, we will make sure that you reach your target audience. Flame Tree TV, now in all CNMI hotels and most homes. It's your best marketing tool. Buenas sports fans. Running sports fans, this is the beginning of running season. A sprint triathlon is coming up this Saturday morning, 6 o'clock sharp, Tilly Beach. Saipan Marathon 2020 scheduled for March the 14th. Runners are prepping now. One of the competitors will be Father Ryan Jimenez. Three years ago, he ran his first half marathon. Not an easy accomplishment for someone his age. It was a struggle. Half marathon? Half marathon. How was it? It was good. How many half marathons? I remember you remember you just started this what two years ago? Yeah, it's probably my fourth. Is it getting easier or harder? It's getting tougher and tougher as we get older. Father Ryan's immersion into these sports began in the 2016 Tagaman Triathlon, where he had his own fan club cheering him on. It's great to get cheerleaders. That's actually my favorite iTunes too when running. Yeah, I've got cheerleaders who accompany me on this journey. This season, Father Ryan added a new modality to his fitness training regimen at Gold's Gym called the Assault Runner. Yeah, I tried it yesterday when Thai showed me and uh, it helps me with my form and, you know, the proper posture for running. If I lean forward, I go fast and then if I like step back, I go slower. And then if I do it without holding on to the rails, it really is a good uh, training to uh, be, uh, it helps me stabilize, you know, and, and, and I sort of I'm more grounded and I run faster. And hopefully I can run uh, more efficiently uh, because of this machine. So I'm going to try it again for the second time today. Runner Ryan says it's a tool to improve his outdoor performance. I try to. I am just uh, slowly uh, started working out again actually since this uh, month of February. And today in particular, it's in between uh, spiritual activities. I'm doing physical activity right now. So, uh, yeah, but I like outdoors. So this is a good way to uh, do a train with this machine here and then try it out outside uh, maybe tomorrow morning to do outdoor run, yeah. Gold's Gym trainer, Dre De Los Santos, explains this new machine. Yeah, so with our new assault runners, we have two of them. Clearly you can see the noticeable difference between that and a traditional treadmill and one of the biggest feature of that is it kind of, well you can call it a curved treadmill if you want to put it in simple terms. With that you kind of experience uh, reduced loading on your body, specifically your knees and hips. So if you're someone who's into interval training that would be a much better option for you. Another newly arrived piece of equipment especially good for interval training is the ski erg. Nice thing about this is virtually anybody can use it. It's user friendly, low learning curve, and you know you can get a lot of work done. So you can clearly see there's a lot of things at play here. With a large amplitude of movement, 
you're essentially getting a great, great full body workout. Perfect for Father Ryan, who KSBN2 Sports first saw competing at the 5th Hell of the Marianas. What the hell of the Marianas, huh? I'm a priest and joining the hell ride. So I think I'll uh, contradict that and conquer hell. <laughs> <laughs> After the race, he said it was hell. All right, the first baseball dynasty here were the Sablon Termites in the 80s and 90s. They were led by the Hall of Fame pitcher Tony Benavente. And here's the way I saw it then. Hello, baseball fans. This is Bob Coldine with a profile of the Saipan Major League. Tonight, we'll look at the Sablon Termites, sponsored by Sablon's Termite and Pest Control. They are the defending champions, and their trophy case is overflowing with championship and pennant trophies. And they may truly be considered as the New York Yankees of Saipan. They are managed by the venerable Dr. Manny Sablon and are loaded with coaching experience in the form of Roki Celis, Furman Sakisat, and Vice Speaker Diego Benavente. The termites are blessed with potent offense, dependable defense, and strong arms on the mound. The termites, of course, are led by former MVP Tony Benavente, their ace on the hill, who is always among league leaders in strikeouts, ERA, and wins. He has a mitt-popping fastball and a late-breaking curve. He's also an excellent hitter. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Traveling or laying over on Guam? Don't wait around. Zip into Guam Adventures at Zipline Park inside the Hilton Resort and Spa. Guides will take you through a series of zips, starting with a mountain course and then zip over the ocean with spectacular views of Tumon Bay. Six zip lines and all deliver a thrilling experience and it's family friendly so bring the kids ages six and up. You'll love the security of double lines and a new braking system to make riding smoother. The towers are named after the islands in the Marianas. We call it the Island Hopper. Your guides will teach you what you need to know to soar through the jungle with a bird's eye view. Best of all, for residents of Saipan, Kenyon, and Rota, you can book this experience at 20% savings. Log on to GuamAdventures.com and during checkout, use offer code HAFA20. Book it and zip it today. We'll even pick you up. Today's high 87, low 75, 61%. Humidity tomorrow, partly cloudy, probably won't rain. Northeast winds 15 to 20, high 87, low 76, 65 to 7 feet. Sunrise 635, high tide 1032, low tide 505, sunset at 624. All right, thank you, Bob. So that was nice to see you back in 1993. 27 years ago. Yeah. A little was, yeah. youngster. Well, we were doing the t uh, back then. We did the, t uh, the games live on TV on yeah. uh, on uh, MCV, mm -hmm. and so uh, they asked me to do a, a preview on each of the teams. So we're going to see that on Vintage News here coming up later on. All right, I'm excited to check it out. Check out the whole thing. So nice little snippet. Yeah, today. everybody looked younger 27 years ago. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Especially you. <laughs> I think I was like two. I think you were. Right <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your night. Good night.